uh, yeah, so uh, I figured it would be quite nice just to explore in a, I mean, this isn't going to be a deep dive thing, but, um, you know, in a, uh, in a, in a fairly uh, summary level, the, um, what's currently going on for the uh, next generation of projects in this space. Um, so I'll put this, this little talk together um, based around uh, based around that. So um, in terms of, you know, where we're at, um, we can sort of go over what's, what's already been done. So we've done the Bitcoin thing, we've done UTXO blockchains, and we've, I think, you know, it's fair to say that we've done the Ethereum thing now. So we've done the EVM and the state thing. And that's sort of uh, been demonstrated to uh, to work, more or less, uh, current um, issues notwithstanding. Um, and then kind of recently, we've, we've, uh, we've seen um, some forays into some of the more sort of privacy-preserving uh, uh, technologies. So ring signatures is one of them. Uh, but the others, uh, you know, perhaps the more interesting one is ZK Snarks. Uh, with Zcash, which uses more or less the same kind of model as Bitcoin, except um, there's uh, uh, nobody actually knows what the uh, what the state, what the whole state of the system is, um, and we only uh, we trust that these uh, the transitions that we make, these transactions actually alter this hidden state in a way that we um, uh, uh, that we think is is correct. In terms of the consensus algorithms, we've kind of experimented with proof of work. And we've got ASIC and, uh, and ASIC and friendly versions of proof of work now. And um, ETH, the Ethereum proof of work, does seem to have um, uh, proven itself as being fairly uh, uh, unattractive for ASIC manufacturers to try to uh, work around. Um, and then we've also seen some proof of stake systems, um, some early ones, NXT and BitShares uh, being two of the, uh, the more mainstream ones. Um, Nothing more um, super interesting than that. Although there are um, perhaps it was, it, there are proposals for um, things like uh, the Tangle, which allow um, a, a distinctly non-blockchain um, system um, to uh, to operate um, using a largely proof of work um, mechanism. Okay, so that's kind of what we've done. So what's what's kind of coming next? So I want to just talk about some of the topics. I, I've identified six topics. You know, people kind of interested in developing blockchain. Um, so the first three, connectivity, um, extensibility and scalability. So connectivity is basically about taking um, uh, blockchains and uh, connecting them to each other. Um, so this idea that there's going to be um, kind of one simple blockchain to is, uh, it is probably, I mean, uh, does the... I can't actually see you, but if I could see you, I would say, um, hands up, uh, who, who actually think there will, in the end, only be a single blockchain um, uh, uh, that everybody uses. Um, I, I guess, can I, a show of hands? Was that one person at the back? Mm, two, one, three, one blockchain eight, to rule them all, yeah. One blockchain to rule them all, maybe, maybe four or five people out of the room. So, yeah, Gen generally uh, considered perhaps uh, unlikely to happen. So the, um, this, this idea of connectivity is, uh, I think, kind of important, um, particularly when we're talking about existing, uh, joining existing chains to newer chains. Um, so the idea that uh, we can make uh, systems that actually are in some sense backwards compatible uh, with, um, uh, with all the ones while still being sufficiently different and not requiring um, alterations to the, um, to the legacy protocols. Um, Extensibility is basically um, kind of what we need to, what we do if we don't have connectivity. So, um, how do we um, add to and alter um, uh, blockchain protocols actually when they're when they're in production? So in situ, um, and this is this is something that, that keeps popping up again and again. And then finally, scalability. Uh, you know, <laughs> how do we actually make these things handle more transactions? Um, than whatever it is at the moment. I think about 30 a second is, is Ethereum's uh, top limit. I think more like six or seven a second is the Bitcoin theoretical limit. Um, you know, these are not ex these are not really gonna gonna work if um, if if we want to actually do a, a solution with mass market. Um, the sorts of numbers we should be um, trying to think about getting towards is sort of one million transactions a second, um, and that's where we can start thinking about blockchain as being 
you know, truly global infrastructure that can service the needs uh, across the internet. Um, and then taking a slightly less maybe technical or less, less core technical, uh, technical um, set of topics, um, we've got things like governance. Um, so governance actually ties in quite a lot to extensibility, but really what we're talking about is a protocol for trying to um, decide when to change a, um, a protocol that's, that's actually in situ. And this is, you know, it's very easy with governance to, uh, uh, to get bogged down in, um, uh, you know, in, in sort of political science and trying to work out which, um, which particular uh, uh, ways and means of organizing stakeholders will result in um, a, uh, a long-term viable system. Um, I think it's probably fair to say that there's no actual answer to that, but um, what we have at the moment is definitely suboptimal. Um, we've got like use case infrastructure basically building that, building all of the stuff that needs to be built or we can actually build anything useful. Um, so for example identity management systems really need to be um, uh, created um, that will allow multiple different uh, use cases to interoperate with each other. Uh, before those use cases, before we're really going to see a large amount of um, um, uh, uh, of of weight given to those use cases. Um, certification is another one. Uh, there are many different use cases that all require, in some sense, certification. Reputation systems, stable coin for the ability to actually um, uh, represent value in, in some, um, some particular uh, denomination that is not uh, on chain, uh, that is not specified by some largely arbitrary economy that's, uh, that's on chain. And a few other bits and bobs there. And then finally, languages um, and tooling. So languages in particular, um, we're seeing quite a lot of uh, different projects try to uh, manage this issue with uh, what happens if you get contracts written on, on the blockchain. What happens if you extend the blockchain? If you get it, you get it written. Um, do, is there a way of minimizing the chances of getting it wrong? Um, okay, so I'm going to look at a few of the next generation uh, projects. They're not really projects yet, they're more proposals. Um, some of them are close to the to be able to release um, uh, something. Um, so uh, Tezos is meant to be uh, having a, a release in around three months' time. Um, Ethereum 2.0 move is um, is pushing towards uh, Gavin. some. Gavin, just just uh, a second. A consensus around what it actually is. Um, yeah. Cosmos is uh, is being developed at the moment, and Polkadot is in an early stage of uh, of its proposal. Uh, but these Gavin, four projects. Gavin. Gavin. Hmm? Can you, can Hello? you uh, yeah hi uh, the because of the connection can you art articulate. Uh, Extra, some extra, so we can better hear your uh, story. Hmm. Okay, I'll do what I'll do what I can. I'm yeah, sure yeah, okay. The internet, uh, but I'll move a bit closer to the mic. Great. Um, okay, so these four uh, projects, uh, Tezos is really um, uh, talking about governance and language in its proposal. So trying to alter the language into a language that's. Um, um, that makes formal specification rather, rather rather easier, and also governance and to some degree a meta protocol layer. Um, Move Ethereum 2.0 is very much similar to Ethereum, but it is trying to um, parallelize across the network some of the um, different portions of Ethereum. So it's sharding or scalability. Um, Cosmos is really concentrating on connectivity and extensibility. So the idea is that something like an internet of blockchains where you can have many different blockchains, potentially each different, and, um, and they can actually, in some sense, talk to each other. Finally, Polkadot is a little bit of scalability and also some of the connecti connectivity and extensibility um, that you might otherwise associate with Cosmos. Okay, so I'm just going to go into, into each of these um, uh, directions a little bit, explore them for, the, uh, for these projects. So with MOVE, uh, on scalability, um, 
we have this idea of port security. So port security is kind of important for scalability. Um, the idea is that uh, when you have many different um, shards, many different chains operating at one time, um, if you, uh, um, you pull the security, so if you say that uh, they're all handled by the same validator set or at least the same incentivization mechanism, the same, let's say, secure um, the token uh, that everybody is bonded and oh, everyone is working towards gaining, then um, when you add a new one, you just need to, um, uh, to consider additional economic incentivization for it to uh, be able to share some of the work that needs to be done. This is very important. So this is what distinguishes these frameworks uh, from, for example, um, the, uh, the side chains proposal of Bitcoin, which basically ignores the need for additional security and assumes that uh, any further chains will be able to provide their own uh, means of incentivization for their security, either through convincing miners to merge mine or, um, or from providing that set of validators or authenticators. Um, so with MOVE, what we're doing is we're saying to pull security, probably ETH would be that the valuable token. And, um, and then between these shards, they to transact with each other uh, largely generically. So to send arbitrary transactions between each other. Uh, these transactions could be just messages, they could be token transfers. That's at a, it's a low enough level that we can actually um, abstract. Similarly, Polkadot is the same. Um, the critical difference is that with MOVE, there may be heterogeneous security, which means that some of these shards may operate with a lower security than others. That's a question mark there, because it's MOVE is still in a relatively early stage of its proposal. Uh, Polkadot's may be a little more um, specific on this. In, in Polkadot's case, it would very much be homogenous security, so it would all be a good as each other. Uh, with Cosmos, it's a little different. Um, Cosmos is much more similar to the side chain proposal, which is that each each of the constituent chains, each of the chains that take part of Cosmos, it's actually that because they're entirely independent, also independent in terms of their security, they must, in general, sort of that will mean incentivizing validators or authenticators or miners or whatever you want to call them to actually process the transactions and do so correctly. Um, between um, the different chains, token transfer, the interoperability is limited uh, to, to the ability to transfer tokens in general by a, a hub chain. So it's a Gavin, the connection is getting really connection is getting really bad. Um, um, let me see if I can uh, maybe disable. Uh, disable. Maybe if we can kill the uh, video or kill the video. Yeah, I'm, but not your screen, of course. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Is that any? Is that any better? Can you hear me? Does it seem a bit more stable? Uh, any better? I'm not seeing your screen uh, yet. Okay. No. We've stopped the video as no. well, so I think if we can get your screen back, then it should be all right. Is that, can you see the screen now? Nope. Hmm. Maybe I have to have my video on. Can you see the screen now? Not yet. Still not? From nope. my side, it does appear to be sharing. Anything? Uh, no, if you if you stop your screen share and start it again, maybe. Mm 
Okay, I've, I've, I've restarted. Yes. Okay. Screen sharing. Yeah, working. Yeah, okay. Okay, so if I stop my video, can, can you now still see my screen? Yes. Okay, good. All right, uh, do, I, do I seem any less, uh, any, any better in terms of quality? Better audio quality? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Ali, see a lot of yeah. nod nodding heads. <laughs> All right. Cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, scalability. So, the, um, uh, yeah, the interesting thing here is basically it's all about pooled security. Um, when we add an extra chain to the system, so when we can parallelize an, an extra bunch of transactions, um, what's, what, what's the security model? Does the extra chain have, have to have its own security, have to arrange its own security, or do we share it out between the existing security um, of the system? So when we talk about security, really what we're talking about is the economic incentivization for the validators or miners or whoever to um, process the transactions and to do so um, faithfully, accurately, and so on. Um, so with uh, with Mauve, to some degree, although there's a question mark, it's, um, it's pooled. With Polkadot, it's very much pooled. Um, with Cosmos, the chains are independent, and so it's not pooled at all, although in principle, you might be able to arrange um, for the same validators to validate um, an additional chain, it's, it's not built into the protocol. Um, and then the, fight, the the thing about scalability is, well, when you add a new, a new chain, what's the uh, what, what does it provide? And for Move and Polkadot, it's generic transaction interoperability, so you can just send transactions between chains, no problem. Uh, with Cosmos, it's a little different. Initially, at least, it's for token transfers only, and eventually, it may be, um, you know, there may be other forms of interoperability, but um, it's largely restricted uh, because there isn't a pooled security, which means um, you can't have the generic transaction interoperability since a transaction coming from a insecure chain may uh, compromise the entire system if it's allowed um, if it's allowed to be taken at its face value. So it, at the present instant, at the present sort of uh, proposal of Cosmos is actually uh, works around this by having a, a secure hub chain, which um, basically acts as the buttress against insecure chains by retaining the account balances of the tokens across the system. And it's through this hub chain that you need to actually uh, communicate your token transfer before it's approved by any of the satellite chains. Okay, so that's scalability. Extensibility. Um, with Move, the extensibility is sort of um, it, it's it's very limited. It's homogenous. We're talking about homogenous shards of Ethereum. So basically, all of the chains have to be Ethereum chains. Everything is 100% open and public, much the same way as Ethereum. Um, and so it's it's very much a scalability thing. It's not so much um, extensibility. The extensibility for what it is comes into Move by virtue of uh, the fact that the the contracts in the chains are Turing complete. Um, of course, they're limited in, in how much they can actually execute, how much uh, processing time by virtue of the gas, but they're, um, uh, they're Turing complete. And that's really where the, uh, the only part of the move that, that, that could be argued to be extensible. Uh, with Cosmos, um, the chains that, we, um, uh, that, that can be part of the Cosmos system are all heterogeneous. So um, essentially, they're allowed to do anything that they want within their state transition model. Um, Initially, there will be only 10 dimint BFT chains supported, but in principle, um, they could be um, arbitrary consensus mechanisms, uh, but that would need to be hard forked and built in. So that's, that's, some, that's definitely a more later stage sort of thing with this proposal. And the, um, uh, the, the, in theory, generic messages between the chains could be supported. Um, and this really harkens back to the, um, uh, to the previous slide um, where uh, we were talking about um, uh, token transfer or generic transaction interoperability. So for, for, for Cosmos, the, uh, although generic messages may, between these kinds of chains may be supported, eventually, um, initially at least, it would only be for token transfers. With Polkadot, extensibility really is its critical feature. Um, so Polkadot has heterogeneous subchains, so all the subchains similar to Cosmos can be entirely different. Um, sovereign and particularly encrypted private chains um, planned via this generic validation function. So basically within the Polkadot framework, each of these subchains can arbitrarily 
uh, it can be arbitrarily specified into the validation system by virtue of a single function. A single function that just takes some data, some block, and decides whether or not it's valid. And these chains can have any code that they want in this validation function. And because of this, we can start thinking about chains whose validation function is actually just perhaps a bunch of signatures. And those signatures could be authorities working within a consortium chain um, that actually process the chain's transition um, in an encrypted fashion and then just sign off on it. But they could just as well be um, a more like like client Ethereum that actually executes the transactions and finds that the state route is valid. Because we can, we can specify this function to be anything, we can actually um, start thinking about actually quite interesting use cases of chains uh, that wouldn't otherwise be possible in a 100% open and public um, network. Um, Polkadot has generic messages, much like um, the Cosmos is theorized uh, with Polkadot, they're actually in there from day one. And the protocol that Polkadot works around is this notion of a WebAssembly meta protocol. So basically you can specify this generic validation functions in WebAssembly um, in order that you can then upgrade what uh, validation functions you support as part of the um, as part of the protocol itself. So on connectivity um, with Move, it's an Ethereum derivative. The idea is that it's actually um, it, it, it progresses from what Ethereum is now to um, um, to the new to, to, to Move itself and Ethereum 2.0 and um, Bridges, although there have been uh, there has been a development of something like the Bitcoin bridge or the Bitcoin uh, kind of peg that allows you to buy um, uh, Ether if you can prove that you've uh, moved Bitcoin into some account. Um, it's it's not yet managed to be to be in any, any way practical. It's, um, it's it's an awful lot easier just to use a third party exchange, and it's not clear um, at what point that that kind of technology is going to become practical. It is theorized at least. Um, with Cosmos, uh, Tendermint BFT chains are initially supported, so they could just be connected right into Cosmos uh, with fairly minimal changes. Um, and there are, um, um, you know, it has been theorized as part of the proposal that legacy bridges could be supported um, and more generic non-Tendermint consensus mechanisms as well. With Polkadot, um, the, with, um, the legacy bridges are planned. So um, in particular, the Ethereum legacy bridge, but also potentially Bitcoin. Um, this would actually be dependent on Bitcoin um, being able to implement into the protocol a, a much more extensive um, threshold signature scheme, like Schnorr signatures, but you know, um, it, it's, it's nonetheless a, um, a potential um, um, a bridge if, that's, if that can be um, arranged. And uh, generic consensus mechanisms have also been theorized. They would form part of this validation function, um, but that's again, a little, um, a little far off. So in terms of languages, um, we've got a little bit more um, sort of variation, a few more projects coming into it. So Tezos um, has proposed a, um, a base language which is formally specified. They've actually published this on the website. You can go and look at it. It's a, it's a, a BNF-like uh, specification for the languages. Um, and this is kind of different to some of the, to certainly for uh, Solidity and Serpent in that um, there's, you know, it, it really started with the the formal specification and will only sort of eventually get onto an implementation um, over presumably that will be released next year. Um, Solidity is moving in sort of the opposite direction. So Solidity first did the uh, the implementation and now it's it's sort of moving back to a, um, a formal specification over the EVM code execution model that Solidity compiles down to, which in principle will mean that any EVM compilable uh, language um, can get some form of um, a formal specification or formal um, proving of correctness um, uh, using this this kind of technology. So that's um, that's still in the works. Um, there's there's little that has been released yet to my knowledge, but I, I think nonetheless it's probably going to be um, um, available in the not too distant future. Um, on the Serpent side. Um, Vitalik's currently working on Viper, which is basically a, a similar um, language to Serpent, but it's restricted. It's a restricted subset of Serpent, allowing um, a, a, a finite worst case execution um, guarantee. So basically, you can guarantee that the program will stop, and it will stop probably after, you know, sort of at most X number of steps. And finally, the, the sort of um, one of the other sort of more overarching currents 
is this idea of using WebAssembly as the consensus language rather than something like EVM. Um, and this is kind of interesting because it allows us to use existing um, a compilation infrastructure like LLVM um, to, uh, to compile uh, these kinds of contracts, this kind of software, which in principle uh, could open the door to um, more um, extensive um, formal specification, correctness proving um, uh, infrastructure. So on governance, now governance is basically like meta protocol um, and management. Basically, it's, it's attempting to allow um, the protocol itself to be upgraded when a sufficient number of or some sufficient um, condition of the stakeholders is uh, is met. Um, there are basically two um, um, things going on here. First is Tezos, who has um, proposed that they use a um, basically OCaml language itself for um, specifying the protocol and the meta protocol, allowing uh, it to specify a new OCaml file um, as the upgrade. Uh, the upgrade. So basically, in um, uh, in hello, yes. Oh, that's okay. Come on. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've only got three slides left. So. <laughs> okay. Um, in this case, it's it's really using the machine readable, machine executable uh, language in order to specify how the protocol should change. Um, Polkadot does basically the same thing as, as part of its proposal, but rather than using Alcamol, uh, which is rather um, uh, slightly exotic, esoteric language. Uh, it uses WebAssembly, which is um, perhaps a little more um, uh, a generic. Um, Polkadot also combines it with, um, and this is relatively unbaked, but a um, an initial uh, proposal for a bicameral governance system, not dissimilar from the Yellow Paper Council, um, and uh, referendums of stakeholders in order to um, to give that its its final clout, its final legitimacy. Um, Ethereum is the uh, is the sort of sad one in this. Um, Ethereum is actually working backwards. So uh, it has no meta protocol, of course. Uh, the hard forks tend to be um, uh, rather uh, uh, difficult um, events. And um, while originally it had the yellow paper as a means of, um, of forming consensus over uh, the protocol itself, um, that's now essentially being wound back um, in favor of uh, the EIP uh, system, which is a much more informal uh, system of specifying protocol alterations and uh, proposals to um, to try to make this more robust under a, um, a more bicameral governance scheme have largely fell, fallen um, uh, on, on, um, on deaf ears. Um, and finally, use case infrastructure. Um, this is this is actually quite slow going. I thought it would be a lot faster 18 months ago when Ethereum was released. Um, but it's, um, I mean, it is moving eventually. Uh, we're seeing MIST um, uh, increasingly get more, uh, more impressive. The Ethereum name system was origin was uh, released a few weeks ago, and similarly from the Parity side, the Parity wallet is getting um, substantially more um, featuresome. And uh, there are registries which are managing things like um, token um, registration, certification registration, names, and so forth. Uh, but in reality, there's there's no easy answers for infrastructure. It's just something that has to be um, evolved to something that everyone's happy with um, uh, to get that uh, you know the kind of snowball effect that, that this stuff needs in order to be useful. Okay, um, that's uh, that's the presentation. Hope you hope it was at least a little bit um, entertaining. And uh, if there are any people from the projects there and I got anything wrong, I'm really sorry. Um, uh, but please do feel free to correct me. Cheers. All right. Uh, I'll switch back to Kevin. Thank you. A warm uh, applause for uh, Kevin. Please. Can't can't turn around the screen anymore, uh, Kevin. But are there any? Because we're running a bit uh, late. Uh, it's not a big deal. But are there any burning questions for uh, Mr. Kevin Wood at the uh, at the moment? Yeah, there's one in the back. I will repeat the the, the question for, for Gavin. Wait, I have a catch box. So. Oh. 
Thank you. Do it. Yeah, just can, can you hear me now? Yeah, a little bit right. louder. Okay, now? Is, is, yeah. is that, okay, um, my question is about governance. Uh, a language like Solidity sort of prides itself in being able to translate what you call legal prose into um, executable code. But most of the time, um, the, uh, the, the important and the more, more difficult kind of legal prose cannot be translated into code because of, of, the, because of context. Um, do you think it's possible for Solidity, for example, to include um, normative fr uh, formalism? Did you catch that, uh, Gavin? Uh, I caught about 70% of it. Okay. So, uh, the, final, the final question was... Uh, the, the final question is, would it be possible, like, are there maybe plans for solidity to include uh, normative formalisms? Um, so, okay. uh, when you say normative, uh, are you referring to uh, legal, um, sort of more um, traditional jurisdiction-based legal uh, um, uh, language? Uh, yes, uh, sort of like a deontic sort of a language. Um, as far as I know, um, I, I think there's um, there's kind of a dearth of um, of talent in this general ecosystem that is familiar both with uh, programming and with um, the ins and outs, the nitty gritty of legal um, legalese, of, of legal formulation, and so it's um, uh, it's going to be a tough. Road to get there. I would also I would also say that um, this actually ties into the uh, the final slide on uh, the infrastructure. I think a lot of the uh, the critical concepts that we naturally drawn up in legal contracts are um, are actually missing from the blockchain um, the blockchain world because they're a little too high level. Uh, the blockchain world kind of is still dealing with some of the lower level sort of computation. Um, when uh, things like you know natural people, um, when uh, things like escrow agents, um, when fiat currencies are still needing to be properly defined, and so you actually need a, that additional, often off-chain infrastructure to be uh, deployed before um, you can get to the point of, of having more, let's say, kind of normative um, um, constructs in 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 a, a language like Solidity. So I hope, I, think. I hope that was clear for everybody. Um, okay, uh, due to time, uh, Gavin, we can't really further <laughs> extend uh, the Q&A. Uh, would you have, uh, I mean, one advice for uh, developers that are uh, about to explore working with Ethereum or blockchain solutions in, um, yeah, in, in, in combination with uh, a lot of businesses working together on a certain solution? Um, I, I would say uh, there's a lot. We're in an immature stage of, of development, and so I would say there's a lot of value in, um, in, in playing around, in understanding what the, um, uh, what the technology is uh, is enabling at the moment. Play around with the Parity Wallet. Play around with Mist. Play around with the uh, EtherCamp stuff, at least within the Ethereum ecosystem, and um, and 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 see where you know see where it leads you. It's uh, it, it's not something that's ready for uh, necessarily aiming at a particular solution. It's something that uh, you know is uh, has its weaknesses and has its strengths. And um, and really, those will become apparent only when you start getting your hands dirty. Uh, again, uh, please send applause for again.